Hello and welcome to Jack Rabbit Journal. South Dakota State, now the only unbeaten team in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Hank, the Jacks a 24-10 win over Youngstown State on Hobo Day. And this was just some opportunistic offense, some really good defense from the Jackrabbits, nothing fancy, and they, they get the W. Yeah, not a bad formula for, for to, to win football games in the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, you play tough defense, uh, and the opportunity comes your way. You make a play. You know, we saw these young players this past Saturday who, who were doing just that, really playing very very good football on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, offensively, when the opportunity came their way to be in a position to put points on the board, for the most part, the guys did a better job of executing down by the goal line. Force some turnovers and get some points following those. Worked out very well. Dallas Goddard, again, uh, continues to be the biggest kid on the playground, just making catches and dragging tacklers down the field. Does not score a touchdown for the first time this season, but he does have six catches in this game for 108 yards, 51 catches already. Ready, uh, on the season for Goddard. That leads the Jackrabbits right now. Brady Mengarelli, his first rushing touchdown of the season. The Jacks score twice in the first four minutes of the football game. Christian Roseboom, the redshirt freshman linebacker, an interception on Youngstown's third play of the game. That's his second pick of the season and the ninth of the year for the Jacks. And then Connor Lambert, his second touchdown catch of the year. And the Jacks up 14-0 early. Hank, it turns out that's all the points they would need. Six sacks in the game for the Jackrabbits. They only allow two against the team that was leading the FCS in sacks coming in. The offensive line is playing well. They really are. And the big boys on both sides of the ball are playing very good football right now. Uh, Hog Molly's up front offensively. They, were, they had a tough task against a fantastic defensive yeah. front from Youngstown State. They stood up to that task and performed admirably. But this defensive line right now, Tom, you, you got to be pumped up about what you're seeing from those boys. Uh, they've really uh, responded from what I understand was a challenge from the coaching staff to be better than what they had the first three games of the season. And man, they're, they're playing great. All right, the Jacks end up with more rushing yards in this game than Youngstown. Jake Winicky uh, with a second half touchdown, his national best 12th touchdown catch of the season. And he is just 10 yards away now from setting a new school record for career receiving yards. And as you said, Kellen Solick with two sacks. He has four on the year in the Jackrabbits. They had 18 sacks in eight conference games last year. They've got 14 already in four conference games so far this season. The Hog Mollies, you're talking about the Hog Mollies on offense or the Hog Mollies on defense? Well, the guys on both sides, really. They're, they're, they're just uh, a, a heightened sense, what I, what I feel anyway, uh, of awareness about what it's going to take for this team to get to the next level. You know, and everybody's fired up right now, as they should be with the Jackrabbits sitting where they are in the conference standings at this point in the season. But make no mistake of it, folks, there's still a heck of a lot of football to play, and it is the Missouri Valley Football Conference. So on any given Saturday, anything but happen, anything can happen. But for right now, where they're at, playing solid in the defensive secondary, Bend but don't break type of defense. Let everything play out in front of you and then get after the quarterback up front. And by the way, you got some linebackers that can make some plays too. Hey, not, things are looking good, guys. Things are looking good. Still a lot of football to play. All right, up next, Coach Stiglmeyer will take you through the big plays of the first half in the Hobo Day win over Youngstown State. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, Service First Federal Credit Union and jackrabbitcentral.com. Welcome back. The Jackrabbits had lost on Hobo Day three years in a row, so they put an end to that little streak with the win over Youngstown State. Let's go to Brookings. Here is Coach Stig with the first half. Stig, let's start with this. Um, who are Clint Brown and Jason Eck, and why do they deserve a lot of credit for what's going on right now? Well, Clint and Jesse Courier coach our defensive lines, and uh, we're way ahead on schedule with sacks this yeah. year and, and just doing a great job up front. And then Coach Eck coaches our offensive line, and those guys have been protecting our quarterback and blocking uh, their tails off. And so a lot of credit goes to our lines, but it starts with our coaches. All right, let's get into uh, this win over Youngstown State. You like the black uniforms, by the way? I, did, I forgot we even had them on. I didn't say anything <laughs> at the end of the game, to be honest with you. So uh, uh, they, the players do, and that's all that matters. They do. They do love them. And here's... Dallas Goddard on the first play of the game goes 61 yards. Yeah, and really uh, just uh, uh, great physical ability. They had it defended. He just runs out of the tackle, runs by some people, runs over some people. As we know, he's a, he's a physical specimen. And then you score on the first drive here. Brady Mangarelli, his first rushing touchdown of the year and the first one that Youngstown's given up this season. 
yeah, it was good to get just get into the end zone. You know, those records, like Coach Pelini said, he didn't even realize that. And, and those things don't matter. Good to get the points somehow, some way, yeah, especially early like that. Now, we had to caution our offense. There was really one big play in yeah. that, that series. It wasn't a, a bunch of uh, uh, six-yard gains. Big play by Christian Roseboom here. Uh, I thought he was going to get in. He's, he's a great athlete. I made a great read on the quarterback. The quarterback didn't even see him. And that happens when you read the quarterback, just get in the, the, the line of sight. And then this is a nicely designed play as well to get it to Connor Lamberg with Jake Winicky blocking out there. Yeah, just a little bubble screen uh, over to our left here. Uh, they play a lot of man-to-man, so you, it's it's a rub, it's a pick route, but it's legal because it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Good to see Connor get in the end zone. Uh, uh, he, he plays his tail off, doesn't get as much accolades as those other guys. Up 14 nothing, but there's still 54 minutes left to go, 56 minutes left to go in the, in the football game. Yeah, and, and we told our team, you know, you, you got to play 60 minutes worth. Here's an example of us not doing a great job. Got caught up on the run, didn't read the pointer, he slid across the field, was wide open, and, and uh, that's not because of the scores. The nature of the game of football. Young defensive end making a nice play here. Really nice job. Again, we talk about do your 111th. His 111th was to go to the outside, make sure everything came inside. It's simple football. It's junior high football, really. Makes a big play in the game. Austin Smenda making that play, and then Jesse Bobbitt was flying all over the field here. And he comes in at the end here. Officials are really looking at targeting this year, aren't they? Well, they, they are, and because it's a reviewable play, they can throw the flag with the ease of. Uh, you know, it can be overturned, and, and I understand that. If in doubt, throw the flag. I didn't think that was even close, but we held him. The the, the, the penalty was denied, and uh, they've got a good kicker, so he's going to make that kick. All right, Kennedy knocks that through. It's 14-3. to three. Jack's in the lead late in the first quarter here, and then after Jack's three and out, some more defense. Roseboom, Dallas Brown back after that injury. Yeah, really good to see Dallas back. I mean, he's a calming spirit. He's uh, he, he knows our defense so well, and he's a good, really good football player, and so it was good to get... We had six sacks in the game. That was really great. Kellen Solick and Nick Farina kind of combo on here. You just jam it all up in the middle. Yeah, and that was coverage. So you just see him bring the ball up, yep. and he's, he has nowhere to throw it. His first key was gone, and we, the, the, the pocket collapses. And, uh, again, our lines are doing a great job. Second quarter here, and this is the longest play of the game. They get that little pump fake and then get 32 yards down the sideline. Great execution on their part. Anthony needs, uh, when he breaks on the three-step, which you don't see there, but they ran a hitch and go, he needs to just destroy it when he comes up, and then it's not that easy to, to complete. Defense but, again, though, Kellen. Solid. Yeah, again, great coverage. Uh, again, uh, uh, our D-line is collapsing the pocket because uh, they are good, and uh, consequently we get another sack. And a missed field goal by the other team coming up here is always a big win for the defense. It is. It just, you know, even though they marched the field some, you come off feeling like a champion because they didn't get points, and, and that's what you want in that situation. You want that momentum. All right, late in the first half, Jack's driving again here. Marquise Lewis making a catch. Yeah, nice play again. Very skilled. You can see how skilled he is. Uh, redshirt freshman for us. He's going to make a lot of plays. Just kind of coming, feeling comfortable in his role right now, but it was fun to see him make that play. All right, next play, Taron Christian going to hook up with Jake Winicky down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, again, Jake is so strong. You can see a battle here. He's made so many of those just simple slant routes, and he's got such a long body. He protects the ball. Uh, big play again in the game. This was late in the first half, trying to get in position to, to, to score some points. Uh, their their defensive end just destroys us because he is a really good football yeah. player. He slants, caught us off guard, and stops uh, Taron uh, down there by the goal line. Chase Vinatieri comes on for a field goal here to make it 17 to three at halftime, and you blitz them early with those two those two scores in the first four minutes of the game, and then it and then it kind of evened out a little bit. Didn't it, it? it did even out. It got almost uh, lethargic at some points yeah. in the football game, but uh, you know some games are like that. They're just like going to work. You just got to get get her done. And keep doing your job. Second half coming up next. Farina and Roseboom and Gottlob and Solik and everybody else getting after it on defense for the Jackrabbits. All right, Hank, the Jacks lead Youngstown State 17-3 to at halftime. Youngstown had come back in the last two weeks in the second half, beating Northern Iowa and Illinois State, but you really didn't get that feeling 
that that was going to happen in this game, did you? No, not really. You know, we knew this was a second-half football team in Youngstown State. They, they had done some things in the, in the last couple of games, really, to come from behind and, and pick up wins yeah. uh, on the road and at home. Uh, but for the, the entire first half, you just didn't get the sense that uh, this offense was really going to pose much of a threat to the SDSU defense. I figured if there was anything that was going to happen, it was going to be a big play on special teams or on defense or a catastrophic breakdown in the secondary for SDSU's defense, and that just didn't happen. All right, uh, back to Brookings. Here's Stig with the second half. Coach, whether you're behind at the half like you were last week at North Dakota State or you're ahead at the half, 17-3 here, you got to have the same mentality no matter what, don't you? Yeah. You, go to you the next play. Go to the next play. Play it like it's your last play. You know, I don't want that to be a cliche. I don't want it to not attach to something. You know, I want it on our players' hearts. So they go out, and even though we're ahead or behind, they play like this play is going to win the game. And it seems like – that's what's happening right now, is it? Well, the, the, many of our guys are buying into that, and it's hard. You know, you're a human being, and you're ahead, and maybe things have been a little easier or whatever, but the real champions play hard all the time. All right, let's get to the third quarter here. And 17,700, biggest crowd ever at South Dakota State. Yeah, and they were great. Uh, appreciated them. Uh, here's a big play in the football game. Again, Christian is making a tackle on the sidelines as our Mike linebacker. Great pursuit because that's what we do. We run to the football. We get a fumble recovery early in the first or early in the uh, second half. Shane Gottlob gets on it there. And yeah, all kinds of defenders in that picture. First play after the turnover, Taron Christian. Literally a read. We called power. He read the edge guy and pulled it. So it should have been a power to our left. He ran it out the right side. So when you have a weapon like that in the backfield, it's, it stresses the, the, the defense. Here again, this is a called run, follow the, the counter type play. And again, you can see when he runs with confidence, he's he makes some special plays. And then look to the left side of the screen here. You got Dallas Goddard coming off from the tight end spot and Jake Winicky on a slam. Yeah, just uh, um, again, we didn't get it in the end zone easy. This was a third down play, but we did get it in the end zone. Again, very similar to the play he caught earlier, just a slant route uh, in the back of the end zone. Winicky acts like he's been there before. Winicky is a, a cool... Uh, easy going. I mean, he plays hard, but he doesn't get, he doesn't go up and down with the emotions of the game. Again, great job here by Shane Godlob. Uh, comes free on the sack, and for a defensive tackle, he runs like a linebacker. So uh, he gets on the quarterback really quick. Jacks up 24-3, going to the fourth quarter here, and first play of the fourth. Taron on a fumble. Yeah, just uh, trying too hard, and give them some credit. They hit him pretty good from the back, knock the ball out, and and uh, and recover it. Uh, we want to take care of the football. I mean, we had two turnovers in this game, and, and we don't want to do that. Huge play in the game here. You know, they're marching. Uh, they can get back into this football game. They run a fourth down play, and Jesse Bobbitt comes up big. For three years, he's been a really good player, hasn't he? Oh, man, he is a, he is a, a pitcher of a student athlete. Number one, he's a great student, but he is so committed to his football team. It's really fun. All right, Terry Christian, this is a really good pass in between four defenders to, to Goddard. Yeah, I really don't see why he threw that ball. He looked <laughs> <laughs> looked pretty covered, but again, uh, Dallas is uh, uh, seems to make the plays. Well, same question here. Should Taron throw this one that turns into an interception off the tip? Well, uh, this was the call. You know, it, it really is his only option. Uh, you know, I think Jake tries to prevent it, prevent it from being intercepted, really, by going up and and tips it. And they give uh, the safety credit. He, he runs his tail over there and makes a big play. Yeah, this is another Nebraska transfer, number three here, Alexander, and he does come up with the interception. So, as you said, second turnover of the game, but defense comes up big again. They bring in their second-string quarterback here in Austin Semenda and Ryan Arath, your two defensive ends yeah, over on the sideline. Playing hard, playing physical. Uh, you know, that, that young, man, young man got hit pretty hard there. Uh, that's the way you want to play the game, but you also want to take care of anybody on the football field. All right, as you said, six sacks, seven tackles for loss in this game, and it ends up 24-10 uh, as Youngstown gets a late touchdown there. But have the emotions been really, really high in these last two games, or have you been able to win these last two big games on kind of an even keel? The emotions were really high for the North Dakota State game. I think uh, we were up for this game, Hobo Day and, and, and Youngstown playing for the conference yeah. lead, but it was a little more business-like. Uh, but again, we approached it that way. We didn't We didn't put a lot of pressure on our players, and they came out and did a good job. And everybody worries about a letdown after two big wins like this. Is that a concern for you? Well, the, the, there's a lot of things that, uh, again, you start reading the paper a little bit more, and you start looking at where are we ranked now, and, and all those things, you're in the lead, and then maybe you look at the records of the, the teams coming up. You can't do that. You have to look at your grade sheet from the film and say, 
boy, I can play better, and then go work on those things. And that's maturity. You're talking about maturity. You need your guys, your juniors and seniors, to be mature and make sure they take care of business. Right. And they, they need, in the locker room, they got to be reminding each other because, again, we, we rely on 50-some guys. We're going to travel with 60. All 60 may play in some role in this uh, Illinois State game. So we got to be reminded that this practice matters, the film matters, uh, the sleep matters. Uh, we're not home at all. Up next, super sophomore quarterback Taron Christian. Is he a better passer than the Jackrabbits thought he would be? And one big change in the way he runs the football has made a big difference. That story coming up. Welcome back. Uh, Jackrabbits quarterback Taron Christian, Hank, has he been okay? Has he been pretty good he's been really good this year why uh, Taryn's been very good so far in 2016 and uh, everything that we saw last year we understood that this was a good football player but I wanted to see whether or not he could develop into a great quarterback and he's taken some serious strides to get into that point this right. year he is uh, one that didn't get away he's a South Dakota kid at South Dakota State and he kind of always knew that he wanted to be a jackrabbit Taron Christian is 15 games into his college football career, and he has quickly and somewhat quietly turned into one of the best offensive players in the FCS. He's a dual threat, you know, uh, he can run the ball too, so defenses aren't only concerned about his throwing and his passing, so um, they have to really sit in there because you never know if he's going to pull the ball and um, run it. So. It's great that he has that um, attribute to him, so um, it really helps us with the receiving core. There's great chemistry among the quarterback, among Taron and all our receivers, and whether it's Connor getting a few catches or those other two guys getting all the catches, uh, they're on the same page. I've been off target more than I'd like to, uh, but they've always come down with it. Uh, Connor made that great catch, Dallas made the one-handed catch, uh, Jake just leaping over people all the time. Uh, so I know if they got one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we got a good chance, even if I just throw it up, not making really a good pass. Of course, he's missed a few, but his completion percentage is 66% so far this season. That's in the top 10 in the country, up from 55% last year when he was good, but still green. Last year as a true freshman, he was very mature. I think uh, the game has slowed down for him this year. Uh, he's not taking as many chances running the ball. And yes, he finally learned how to slide this year. <laughs> Oh, I kind of got some grief uh, last year because um, a lot of times I'll just hit guys and I just kind of bounce back. It wasn't like high school anymore where I could hit guys and still fall forward. Um, so kind of in the off season, the coaches kind of gave me some grief about it. Uh, Coach Jack especially uh, was giving me crap. Uh, so really, just just keeping myself safe. And then uh, I know I've kind of bummed myself up in the in the TCU game, especially uh, rolled my ankle. So. Uh, when I get down, I'm not getting hurt, so I mean, it's, it's good for me, uh, it's good for the team, uh, and it, it keeps guys out of my ear. Well, the Jacks got in his ear and got serious about Christian in the summer after his sophomore year of high school at Sioux Falls Roosevelt. It was one of the first college camps I'd been to, and uh, I remember co talking to Coach E a lot, Coach Jackson uh, beforehand saying they wanted, wanted me to come up, they just wanted to see me uh, in person. Um, just kind of see what, how my throwing technique was, how I moved, uh, flexibility, stuff like that. And then after camp got over, I talked to Coach Stig and he said they were going to offer me a scholarship and uh, just, just kind of rode from there. Well, during the recruiting process, Christian had high interest from FBS schools, Ohio and Eastern Michigan. And he made visits to Iowa and Iowa State in Minnesota. But he kind of knew all along where he wanted to be. I was going to go on a couple more visits um, before my senior year. And one day I was just like, I know I want to be here. I know I want to be a Jackrabbit. Um, I loved it. Uh, they loved me. Um, I really felt at home. Uh, I knew my parents and my family could come watch my games. Uh, I wanted them to kind of get this experience with me. And uh, it, it really just felt like home to me. And even an injury that kept him out for most of his last high school season did not deter either coach or player from keeping their commitments. We had offered him a lot earlier than his senior year. And so we believed in him. We thought he'd be a great quarterback. Uh, you can't judge how hard a guy's going to work, and, and Taron has taken his God-given gifts and maximized them. Really, I, I got hurt, and then I hadn't played football until I got here. Um, so I think just live reps kind of, uh, I hadn't actually thrown to receivers running full speed and seen a defense 11-on-11, 11 11, seen a live rush, stuff like that. Um, so I mean, maybe it did a little bit, but I don't think it took too long, because I mean, uh, I still prepared for it, um, prepared for games uh, in high school like I was playing uh, so that I could get to our other quarterback ready, help him uh, be better in that, from that standpoint. Um, 
Well, it was, it was a tough time, uh, but I don't think it really set me back. It never crossed my mind that I was never going to play football again. I'm, I mean, I had in my mind that I might not play high school football again, but I, I knew there were bigger things to come. And, and folks, when you look at Taron and his game on the field, a whole lot has to be attributed to the SDSU offensive coaching staff. Coach Eric Eisenis and, and his crew have really gotten him prepared over the last year, hone in on his fundamentals, understanding that they are dealing with an elite athlete and that they could, they could really turn him into a great football player if he was the right individual to get that done. And based on everything that we've seen up to this point and heard from him, his composure, his decision-making skills on Saturday, and everything that he says before and after a game, uh, I think that the SDSU certainly found a diamond in the rough in Taron Christian and expect huge things from him in the future. Absolutely. All right, uh, the Jackrabbits and Taron Christian play at Illinois State this Saturday. Remember this game on the road two years ago against the Redbirds? Stig does. He said they got destroyed in that one. Should be a little different this year. Some thoughts about this weekend's matchup coming up next. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, Service First Federal Credit Union, and jackrabbitcentral.com. The Jackrabbits play at Illinois State this Saturday. The Jacks are 4 0 in the Valley. The Redbirds are 1 and 4, and two of those losses were by three points. Uh, anyway, last time the Jacks played there, Illinois State won 45 to 10, and that was the year they went all the way to the national championship game. But still, here's Coach Stig. They've got weapons. They've been snake bit a little bit, uh, but they are a good football team. And, and uh, last time we were out there, they, they literally uh, destroyed us. So we need to be ready to play our best football. Illinois State lost last week down in Vermillion against South Dakota, but uh, the Redbirds, they're still a very dangerous team, right? Absolutely. This is Missouri Valley football. The Jackrabbits need to be ready to go this Saturday. Coach back in Illinois State, they'll be ready to go. SDSU needs to go down there and take care of business.